All right, so that ceremony was an epic fail. Not really. Um, we started the ceremony, everything was good. We're in a big open field and I can't help when the wind just starts kicking up. So on the lapel mics, wind and lapel mics, these things are not good. Sometimes we get out these locations, the wind picks up, there's not much that we can do. But what we can do is make sure that we have a backup plan in case that happens. And so being able to switch that out, uh, they're doing a prayer. It was a quiet time. We walked up, gave them the mic, said, hey, use this mic, turn down the other mics, and we we're golden. Once everybody has one, once I've done the words of institution, feel free to partake of communion whenever you are ready. God, giver of all that is gracious, we thank you for binding us together in the holy mysteries of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is July 27th. We're in Silverton, Oregon, getting ready to do a wedding for Danielle and Nick. Um, I'm gonna show you guys around. This is a very complicated wedding. We have about 300 people, I think, was the total guest amount. It started with about 150. A lot of times when you're planning your wedding, your guest list starts pretty small and then, you know, aunts, uncles, kids, all together, it gets pretty big. So we had to adapt our package to fit this particular wedding. So right out here is our uh, ceremony site. So we have our ceremony over there. With bigger ceremonies, we need to do a two speaker setup so everybody can hear properly. One of the biggest things with ceremony and people complain is not being able to hear. So if you want your guests to enjoy the ceremony, having a DJ for your ceremony is really critical. So it's really important to me that everybody hears clearly at the ceremony, not trying to guess what anybody says. The bride and groom spend all this time writing their vows, what they're gonna say to each other, uh, the minister's preparing his speech. So I don't want anybody to miss any of those or have any kind of dropout. I want everybody to hear everything clearly from the person that's in the back of the room all the way to parents and grandmas that are all the way in the front of the room. So for me, a ceremony setup up and having proper high quality microphones kind of really separates me and make sure that your ceremony runs smoothly. So Nick and Danielle go from this day the same way you got here in prayer and patience and perseverance no matter how far away you are right. Don't forget to relax into each other. Laugh as much as you can. Surround yourselves with people you love and who love you back. And lastly, never take it all too seriously. We have our DJ booth that's all the way over there, and that's where our speakers are for our DJ dance party. Nobody's gonna hear anything over here. So we have one speaker right over here. We have another one halfway down. We'll have proper sound so everybody can hear the announcements when I dismiss people. All importantly, when the bar is open, um, when we're doing speeches, so everybody knows what's going on uh, throughout the day. So depending on the location, how many people you guys have, the setups are gonna vary, but I wanna make sure that everybody hears what's being said on the microphone and there's no confusion of what's going on next. So nobody missed any of your guys' events. So you can see, this is the length that we need the sound to travel. So going from the dance floor all the way over there, nobody would hear anything what's going on. So that's why it's important that we have those speakers and that we zone the speaker so we can keep the overall volume really low and it sounds really well. So one of the biggest challenges working with backyard parties is you do save money when you do your wedding uh, in the backyard, especially when you have like 300 people, but you need to have adequate lighting. That's very, very important. They brought in these uh, string lights, but later on in the evening, we're gonna put up lights against this and we're gonna up light the back of that. It's very important understanding the different kinds of lighting and what they do. So this could be our dance floor. So we have a spotlight up here and we're gonna have a spotlight over there to light up the dance floor and it's gonna look really good. So that's the importance of doing a site walkthrough, going through the details, using our planning form so you know exactly what we need to be prepared for on the date of your wedding. All right, so we're about to go get changed. Uh, guests are gonna arrive here probably in about 20 minutes. We're gonna get ready to do uh, background music for... You're doing the ceremony. Yeah, yeah. My name's Alex. Hey, Alex. What's your name? Matt. Matt, nice to meet you. So right before the ceremony, I'm going to mic everybody up over there. I'll have okay. a microphone for you. Yeah, it will great. be on. Okay. The volume will be down okay. until you get up there. All right, so the ceremony is about to start. I'm going to come over here and mic up the officiant. 
I'm also going to mic up the groom. I'm going to give them detailed directions on how I'm going to run the ceremony because there's going to be cues from over there in when to walk and I want it to be a smooth transition from song to song. If I can have the efficient, what's up? Good, man. Looking good. good. <laughs> Thanks, you too. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's dying. <laughs> so warm. Yeah. Let's do it. You're in there. Did you get that pen? I won't. Not till after you. So you're all lined up. You're good to go. You guys are walking in the background music, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Up to them. So they're all ready to go. Awesome. It's really important when people are so far away is making sure that we have least line of sight for communication. Oh, if we could have everybody please take their seats. We're about to begin the ceremony. If everybody could please grab their seats. We're about to begin the ceremony. So I come out here so I can see the bride walk down the aisle because everybody's going to stand up and I want to turn my music when she gets about halfway down. So the bride's about halfway down, start bringing down my music. Nick, <clears throat> do you take this woman to be your wife and do you pledge your faithfulness to her in the holy bond of matrimony? I do. Danielle, do you take this man to be your husband? And do you pledge your faithfulness to him, to live with him and cherish him in the holy bond of matrimony? I do. Now, by the power vested in me here in Marion County, I now pronounce you man and wife. Nick, you may kiss the bride. So right now we got cocktail hour going on. I bet you there's close to 400 people here. Um, and I'm really glad that we did the zoning of the speakers because it's really quiet over there and really quiet over there. There's no way we'd be able to get any sound over there if we didn't have that speaker set up. So do you guys know your order? No. Would, would you like me to call it out or would you guys just wanna? Um, so right in, right in between the table? Yeah. In that shaded area, that's going to give the photographers the best picture. So if we can stay out of the sun right there, and that way you can talk to them and you can also talk to the crowd at the same time. So Nick went on to tell me that growing up, he had learned that there's two important decisions a man must to make. And the most important decision he has to make is the guy he's going to serve and the woman he's going to marry. And I thought, you know what? I think this is meant to be. This is the right guy. So with that, welcome to the family. Thank you all for, for making it, for coming out, for celebrating with us um, as we're, you know, our newly established family unit and um, uh, celebrating our, the beginning of our lives together. So thank you guys. Yeah.